Most of us work out to feel and look better, but what if I told you that you're up to five times less likely to die of any possible cause if you work out correctly and pay attention to this one value called VO2 max. VO2 what? Don't worry, in this video we're going to explore all the details around what VO2 max is, what makes a good and a bad score and its surprising relationship to longevity. So let's get into it. What's up explorers, Marius here and welcome to another episode of I lost my map to the fountain of youth, so we'll have to draw it again, but I remember physical help was on it, so let's find out why. Alright, before we dive into what VO2 max is, it is important to clarify how our bodies actually create the energy needed to power our muscles. Basically there's two main energy systems, the aerobic and the anaerobic energy system. Anaerobic simply means without air and this system provides our bodies with the short-term explosive power created without the use of oxygen. Ready, set, go! For example, if you are a short distance sprinter, weightlifter or do bodyweight exercises, you rely primarily on anaerobic energy. But within roughly two minutes, your anaerobic energy stores are used up and at that point something called lactic acid reaches a very high concentration in your muscles and causes them to burn. Yes, that's where that feeling comes from. And should you not know that, start to put some effort in your workouts. Ugh. On the contrary, aerobic means with air. And surprise, this energy system produces its energy from using oxygen. Aerobic activities include for example swimming, jogging or cycling and most people refer to it as cardio. Here people rely on a steady output of energy over an extended period of time and without the need for frequent breaks. But it is important to note that we don't just use one system at a time, we always use a mix of aerobic and anaerobic. Now, where does VO2max come into the picture here? Well, VO2max measures the maximum amount of oxygen your body is able to utilize during peak performance. And hence, it basically indicates how powerful your aerobic system is. Most often, it is expressed as a ratio relative to your body weight. That is, in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute. I know, sounds complicated, but to give you a rough idea, for example, this guy holds the world record at 97.5. On the low end, the ACSM says if you have a score below 17.5, you're not independent anymore. And that would mean you wouldn't even be able to, for example, carry your groceries home or even up the stairs. But in the end, you're just left with a score where you can generally say the higher, the better. And that's true when you relate longevity to VO2 yes. max 2. In 2018, a massive study finished where since the 90s scientists tracked VO2 max and all cause mortality of over 120,000 participants. This huge amount of people were put into five performance groups, from low to elite, depending on their VO2 max, age and gender. If you know your VO2 max, you can determine where you rank. But the table you see here is a little complex because you need to take all values by 3.5. No idea why they've done it like that, but I just transformed the table to make it easier for you. So feel free to pause or refer to the link in the description below. Okay, so what did they find out actually? They found that cardiorespiratory fitness, that's what they call view to max is inversely associated with all-cause mortality. Please talk English. What's all-cause mortality and what does that mean? All-cause mortality simply is the risk to die of any cause over a certain time period. In this case, 10 years. Now let me exemplify. This study found that if your view to max ranks in the low group, you are about five times more likely to die at any point in time of any possible cause than someone in the top 2.5% for your age and sex. Impressive. Can you put that into context? Sure. If you would be a smoker, you have a 41% increase in oil cause mortality, of course relative to a non-smoker. Similarly, high blood pressure is a 21% increase, diabetes 40% and late stage kidney disease around 178%. And now compare that to the 500% increase in oil cause mortality when you rank low versus elite view to max. Uh, pff, elite 2.5%? I'm no Ironman runner. You might be right. 
I don't think you will be able to finish an Ironman or a marathon. But even if you're able to improve your VO2 max from low to below average, you already cut your mortality risk in half. Alright, so let's see where I rank now. I think my Apple Watch should already give me VO2 max. So let's check the health app and oh yeah, <laughs> nice, above average, 50.4 and increasing, interesting. Hmm, I'm curious if my Fitbit app displays the same. Huh? 58? What's going on here? Alright, so I investigated this discrepancy and found out that there's many different ways to estimate VO2 max. And performance trackers only give you an approximation at best. Because to get a proper result, you need a real performance test in a lab. And that's why I sent our explorer into the field to one of the most renowned clinics for sports medicine in Germany. If you are curious to find out how a proper VO2max test works, which do-at-home test is best and what's the optimal training routine to improve your cardio fitness, then click this video here and in the meantime, a little sneak peek of part 2. That was pretty exhausting, but he said I'm kind of fit. Let's see what the doctor says. <laughs> 